Today we're going to learn how to solve quadratic equations by factoring. So our first example, we have a trinomial quadratic. So it has three terms. It has an A, an A, a B, and a C term. And we notice that it is equal to zero. This is super important. It always should equal zero. So we can go ahead and factor our tri trinomial here. Since it has a one as a coefficient for the A term, we're looking for two things that add to our middle term and two things that multiply to our last term, our C. So what are two numbers that multiply to seven? So I'll go ahead and list the factor pairs of seven, and really I've only got one and seven, and maybe negative one and negative seven. That's it. Obviously, one and seven add to that one. So we can go ahead and factor this as x plus one and x plus seven. And notice that this is still an equals, so we're going to say equal zero. Now that we have it written as two factors equal to zero, we can go ahead and split this into two equations using the zero product property. x plus one equals zero. And then we can also say x plus seven equals zero. Subtract one from both sides, and I get x equals negative one. Subtract seven from both sides, and I get x equals negative seven. So our answer is actually both of these answers. And we could write it in set notation. That's a really ugly bracket, but we have negative one comma negative seven. Doesn't matter what order they go into because they're both x's, they're not an x and a y. That's also why we don't use parentheses because if we put parentheses, it would look like it's an x and a y. But these are actually two answers for the same variable, two x's. Our next example, we actually have a binomial. It's only got two terms. It is still equal to zero. So we can, we can go ahead and factor this just by using the GCF. And that means we can take something out of both terms. It looks like I can take an x out, but that's it. So I'd end up with x, and then in parentheses, x plus 23. And it's still equal to zero. Our zero product property says that I can split that up into two equations. The first one being the most simple, x equals zero. The second one being x plus 23 equals zero. This one's already solved, so I just have to solve this one by subtracting 23 from both sides. x equals negative 23. And so we have our two answers. We could write the solution set as 0, comma, negative 23. So it's actually easier when there's just a factor that is a monomial, because it's usually going to just be equal to 0. Example three, we have a trinomial with a lead coefficient. So you can see that a is seven, b is 22, and c is three, and it's still equal to zero. When we have a lead coefficient, that means we're going to go ahead and multiply the a and the c. a, c equals seven times three, which is 21. That's where I got that, seven times three. And then what we're going to do is we're going to list all the factor pairs of 21. And what we're looking for is we want a factor pair that equals 22 when we add them up. And really, that's all I've got. I've got negative, I've got 1 and 21 and 3 and 7, and I could do negatives as well. But I can already see that 1 and 21 are going to do it. I'm going to go ahead and split that up as 7y squared plus 1y plus 21y plus 3 equals 0. Remember, it's still going to be equal to 0. Factor by grouping means I'm going to take out a 7y. That leaves me with, well, I can't take a 7 out because I have to take 7 out of both of them. It looks like I can just take out a y. And that would leave me with 7y plus 1. The second one, I can't take out a 7 either, but I can take out a 3. A positive 3. And that would leave me with 7y plus 1. And it's still equal to 0. Notice that both of these are the same. That means I did, did my grouping correctly. And that means my two factors are 7y plus 1 
and y plus 3, and they equal 0. Zero product property means I can split that up, and so I have 7y plus 1 equals 0, and y plus 3 equals 0. I can go ahead and solve these. I'm going to solve the y plus 3 first, and I subtract 3 from both sides, and they get y equals to negative 3. So that one's done. This one I have to do two steps, subtract 1, and then I have to divide by 7. So I end up with y equals negative 1 over 7. I'm going to leave that as a fractional ugly like that. Um, so you see that most of our work was actually most of our work was actually factoring. And then we ended up with two answers, just like we have every other time. Let's do one last example. Again, we have an A, a B. This time notice that B is negative, and our C, which is just 12. We're going to go ahead and multiply 3 times 12 to get our AC, and that's 36. We're going to list all of the factor pairs of 36. And that's going to be 1 and 36, and 2 and 18, and 3 and 12, and 4 and 9, and 5 doesn't go in, but 6 does. 6 and 6. And then I'm actually going to stop uh, because I've already hit the same number on both sides, so it's just going to kind of loop back. The next one will be 9 and 4. I want you to remember that we have a negative in the middle, which means that one of our two numbers at least is negative. The truth is that since we have a plus when we multiply together, that means that they're both negative. So let's look, put negative on both of them. And when we do that, we're looking for numbers that add to negative 13. And the only ones I see that do that are negative 4 and negative 9. So I'm going to go ahead and split that up as 3u squared minus 4u minus 9u plus 12. I'm going to go ahead and factor by grouping. I'm going to remember to take out this negative here on the 9, by the way. So when I do that, I end up with just taking out a u, and that leaves me with 3u minus 4. I'm going to take out a 8, negative 3, and that leaves me with positive 3u minus 4. Notice that these are the same. That's good. And since we're solving a quadratic, we're actually going to, I'm going to jump ahead and go ahead and split them to 2. So that would give me 3u minus 4 equals 0. And u minus, u minus 3 equals 0. When I do that, I'm going to add 3, add 3, and I get u equals 3. Okay, so I'm halfway there. The other side, I'm going to add 4, add 4, and I get 3u equals 4. Divide by 3 on both sides, and I get u equals 4 over 3. So I end up with my two answers. And I could write them as, an, as a set as 4 over 3, comma, 3. And that's how we solve quadratics by factoring.